I'm going to go ahead and begin because all of you uh, come here. Uh, is it 11 o'clock? 11 o'clock. You've come here for your Saturday morning, so I appreciate that greatly. The other person who's a part of this show, whose name is Richard, is out meditating. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll try not to do too many side stories, but I do have to tell you that he bought a brand new metal detector last week. Yesterday, he found a 1901 Indian head pen. Oh. Is that amazing? Oh, I mean, it is. That's 118 years old. Wow. Um, Why Rock Lake? Why Rock? Where a million people have hunted. But his new metal detector just goes down deeper. And so he jumped up, and, he, and so I have a little statement to briefly read from him. Um, but he said this morning, I don't understand. I don't understand why would people come on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I just don't understand. It's not his nature, whatever. Um, so I know all of you, and, and so I'm Marty. And I tried, I was thinking, I should write out what I'm going to say, but I didn't get around to that. But I gave myself some little pointers <laughs> of what I wanted to, to go over. Uh, and first of, first, first of all, I want to recognize a couple of people that are here uh, who had a part in it. This show was happening or helping me in some big way, and two of the uh, two are students, past students of mine from North Lake College, Tommy Wright. Mr. Moe. <laughs> and yes, Mr. Moe. 
He is the co-director of the Gold Mark Art Center. And <laughs> the other co-director is Chen Shen Yet. And I'm going to recognize uh, the Gold Mark Cultural Center because the first body of work to be shown uh, in a nice way of our collaboration paintings and pop was at the Gold Mark at the Melody Gallery. I was invited to be in that uh, exhibit one year ago. Kenneth came to that exhibit. I said, Kenneth, what about if we did a show here and we put paintings and pop? So uh, I'm glad he said yes, because I'm primarily I'm represented here with my pottery, and it's a different thing to have these paintings here. Um, okay. Now, my little notes. One of the things I think is, I'll, I'll touch on a little bit about my themes and also techniques. Um, but collaboration, I wanted to especially mention. Richard and I actually were in high school together, but he knew, he knew me, I didn't know him. Some of you know that story. I was a senior and he was a sophomore. When I was 17 and he was 15, he has let me know this, but I was the um, head of putting up the uh, little after set designs in the stage. And the art teacher let me take some students down to the stage and let them work for me. Richard, who I don't remember, but he says, I told him to paint those clouds <laughs> you know, do this. He said he actually thought I was the teacher. <laughs> so if we go back, our first collaboration went back to when he was 15, I was 17. And then, uh, and then years later, I don't know, 10 years later, 1969, I was thinking all oh, this because when we give an art talk, you got to think about what you're going to say. So it's been 50 years since I really met Richard. And, oh, then we found out we grew up in the same neighborhood and a lot of connections. With the big connection being that we're artists. Both. And we're both artists. If you would ask both of us, when did you start doing art? Our answer is two years old, three years old, forever. So Richard and I are both in our 70s. Together, we have 140 years worth of art experience. <laughs> but not clever. <laughs> Big neat thing is, he's an artist in his own right. And a lot of you know his paintings. He loves Van Gogh, he likes that thick painting, everything, fire rock light, portraits, um, landscapes. But, um, And, you know, about eight years ago, we began to collaborate on these paintings. And if you don't mind, I would like to read, but I'll do it uh, hopefully in an easy way. The other collaborator who is up here, who maybe is finding me a gold ring in the ground. <laughs> I said, Richard, are you going to go? Well, no. I said, you've got to tell me some things to say because you're a part of this. So, he said, okay, here. He started blabbing it out. Said, wait, wait, let me get a pen and pencil. So last night we looked together to see if I had written. And I'll go ahead and um, read this because it's going to tell you the collaboration part of, of how we worked um, and got to hear these things. These are Richard's words. So, so Richard says, Richard says, I love helping Marty with her work. She does very inspiring drawings on pottery. In the 1980s, I began little by little drawing and painting on, on Marty's pottery. About eight years ago, we came up with the idea to create paintings on canvas. Marty would do a line drawing in the design, then I would paint. It was similar to what I'd been doing um, painting her in size drawings on the clay. 
He says, I like painting Marty's drawings. It's a good distraction to get away from my own work. It helps me to relax because the drawing is already there. So all I have to do is think about color. And his main big deal, really, is color in yeah, his paintings. And I let him be free. He didn't say that, but I'm out <laughs> One day, Marty did five drawings, each on a cafe napkin. I picked out several, and then I enlarged them on canvas with my favorite music playing. Then I painted, staying in the lines, <laughs> like I did, but adding shadows and uh, shadows here and there, relaxed and having fun. The black and white pottery is Marty's alone. She does not let me touch these. <laughs> That's true. I do work on the colored pots. Sometimes Marty lets me draw and paint the whole form. That's my favorite way to work. But she can be adamant about the color on the pot. Painting on pottery is not as free, and it's more time consuming. Richard paints very fast, acrylic paint. But painting on clay is real time consuming. Three coats of underglazed paint on every thing when, when we're painting in, the, in those. Color is more of a mystery on the clock, and we have to depend on the firing. With the acrylic paintings, I play with different color schemes, and I can change color easily. Working in collaboration seems to move ideas along faster, and it's really fun. That's Richard's words. <laughs>
this might be something. I can't remember. I have it. But I might take something like this and do an outline drawing using this as a guide. So when I say the paintings come from the pottery, they sometimes do, or a lot of times they come from my head, just me drawing what I feel like I want to draw. Um, I'll, I'm not going to go through this whole book, but I'll have this book back at the back after the talk. If any of you want to, I brought some clay and some already painted little tiles so that you can experiment with the black technique, which I'll talk about in a minute. But in finding things, I've, just, I've got to show you this, and if you can look at it closer, back to back. That's a sketchbook drawing that I did when I was 17. And it is called Study Hall. And it's when I was a senior at Samuel, where Richard knew me and I didn't know him. He could be in there. <laughs> oh, no. I asked him before and I said, are you in there? He said, no, I'm going to stop it. But if, you know, you can just see my way of drawing is all within his kind of cartoon like fashion and lots of people. So I had Paul Harris as an art teacher, and if you know him, and he gave us a weekly sketchbook assignment. Anyway, I was just going to jump and I found that. And I, there's more interesting things in this book. And Kenneth has put out a, a book, plus our statement over here, that y'all can go through and read more about Richard and I. Now let's see, Mo. We're going to get around to you in just a minute. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to touch on the themes that are in the work. And I had to think about that. And it's good. It's good as an artist to give a talk. Now I know some people who are artists don't want to talk, can't talk, they're too shy. I live with one. I mean he's not really, but um, but in giving an art talk, you have to think, what is it I'm doing? And so I had to think about the work in this show today and think, now what what are my things? And um there are four black and white pots here. And Kenneth has put numbered these, and there's a coinciding sheet that gives you the title um, of all of them. The titles are on the bottom, but I think they don't want you to pick them up and turn them up and look at the bottom. But um, I'll point out a few titles to four of these black and white ones. Scattered is a little pot over here, scattered. Look like my, that's how I felt when I was starting this body of work. It's just like, what am I doing? And um, so there's trees and people and swirls and things going on. This is one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite shapes and um, drawings in the show. And the title is Things to Do and Places to Go had to do with my life. My, some, I hardly ever know exactly what the title of something's going to be. I do it, and as I'm working, I figure out the title because every piece, every pottery has the title on the bottom. And so if I have made a mistake, it's too bad. It's on there. It's fire. <laughs> but, and, and so this one has Figures, which I start out, I'm, I'm jumping into now a technique. One of the techniques, the technique I don't let Richard touch, is the black and white scorpito drawings. That's, I brought these little tiles so you can see what it's like to carve into black onto the white clay. But anyway, the, the clay is white. This is covered with three coats four coats sometimes, a black slip. That, all, all these pottery techniques, all this pottery takes a long time. As I'm working painters, 
I'm thinking, it's a lot of work to do clay. <laughs> but anyway, and then we got to stick it in the kiln. Okay. But so then I know that I started this out with just some free figures. Laurie Whitaker is here from Goldmark. She, she coordinates a figure drawing class at Goldmark once a week. You notice I haven't come because I, <laughs> I sort of do these free figures that just come, but I've had figure drawing and everything. But anyway, so I started with some figures just leaping around, dancing around, moving. Then I started carving away things in the background. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, what is this? What is this? And so I decided, things to do and places to go. It's a busy life. In a lot of my work, there's a frame. There's pots almost in everything. I don't think you'll find one that doesn't have a pot. And trees. I live in the woods in White Rock Lake, around White Rock. So I like the shape. Uh, Tommy, I'm sure, threw the two parts left them for me and then I joined them, but I like the way this shape works. And I'm not going to talk about every piece, but this is another related where I drew the figures and then started putting things that happen around them. Oh, uh, this is like sculpture. There's some pots. There's just, there's a city. And I sent a picture of this to Chin Chin and I said, what is this? What would this be named? And so, Forgot what the name is. It has a good name. So <laughs> day by day. Day by day, day by day, or something like that. A lot of another thing that art shows that shows up on the pottery, um, a couple of them paintings, like like that bright one in the middle, which is art talk, I think, the painting. Art shows. I have been an exhibition person. I exhibit. I love exhibits. Um, I should have also introduced another important person. I could introduce all of you, but Catherine Wagner is here from the Business of Cultural... No. Oh. Business, Business, Business Council for the Arts. But Catherine and I go back to D-Art, where she was the director there at D-Art, and then she remembers me being a part of the exhibit. So I've always yes. been a part of... On board. Yes, and on board. But, but putting up exhibits, I love exhibits. I'm, I'm on the exhibit thing at Goldmark. <laughs> so how did you All right, so art shows uh, are a part of the thing. I try to come up with some titles. I'm not a good word person, but I like the title of this. It's Meet Me at the Art Fair. Because it's just a lot of And I like this little man here with the hat. Okay, Mom. This is a uh, pot that I do have to take time to mention because the star that's on it is here. And this again, you can see for sure, this is a large pot that Tommy threw. And then he just threw me a whole lot of other smaller pots on it. Then I decided how to put things together, but I put them together. This is called Walking the Dogs. It was inspired by Mr. Mo. <laughs> <laughs> and my dogs that I could catch. And Mr. Mo is in this. Let's see if we can find him. You see him? <laughs> there he is. And he's the only one in this uh, pod that is not on a leash. He's on a leash today. <laughs> Which is nice. Like he's not on a leash. So. This is one that I drew, and I did the color, and, um, and I did the figures, and yes, Laurie, I probably could afford to take some figure drawing, but anyway, it's, it's a hand sort of Is that Millie on there? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I don't know. Yeah. This is a dog I used to have named Heidi. This is my, one of my Boston Terriers. Bonnie or Austin or Mickey. <laughs> and then Mr. Mullins right there. He's my uh, Thursday dog when I go to Goldmark. Except for today, he's your Saturday. He's my Saturday. <laughs> I 
I'll, uh, I'm going to let y'all ask me some questions. I'm going to wind down. But uh, Megan, who is in a assistant, is able to be here today because she's in a play this morning, isn't she, Alex? That's correct. But she came to the studio and she saw this and she said, Marty, we should bring that so that people can um, feel of it. And, um, of course, we're not in a museum, don't we? But this is something I did actually at the Goldmark room there. Sometimes I do little small things. But the two pottery techniques, here they are. The black and white, and then the color. Um, the, the way I draw is so different on um, those. On this, I do an outline and I incise it and we fill in the color. Like a color book. I have a first one. Oh. So this row, of, 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 there's 16 pots that are in this show, and these are all of the colored ones. And I'll point out the ones that I let Richard do the whole thing. This one, and it's one of my also favorites, it's called All of Us. And my work that's in here, is not necessarily political or about you know some big serious um, world thing, but this is, and this comes from you know just things in the news about how many different people there are in America. And I actually said, Richard, do put on this pot. Let's call it all of us. But he did the drawing, he did the color, and I did I did the. So if you look around it, I'm going to go ahead and point this out. Just like my mother, I tell people more than they need to know, but I think it's important. There should be some darker faces in here as well, which Richard thought he had done, but when it got fired, the, the dark underclays didn't come out dark. But anyway, so you have to visualize that some of those faces would also be dark. <coughs> This is one that I did the drawing. It's called Summer Garden. And sometimes instead of people, I put birds, sometimes I put cats. Um, so I did the drawing, Richard did the color. Here, you do the color. And then I'm just, you know, hoping. <laughs> but it came out. This is called Make a Wish Every Day. And I did the pot. Again, the components of the pot. This is an odd shape that Tommy came up with drawing. This shape right here, you'll see it right here. Tommy was throwing. He said, Marty, I figured out how to make a bowl. And, and he did this. And then, and then I said, well, I'll make a bowl this way. But anyway, uh, so I added a little top to this one. I did the drawing. I did the color. This one, I let Richard do the whole thing, but not the pot. No, he doesn't do the pot. And this one actually does come from a painting that's here. Rainbow Town is here. Uh, again, instead of people, it's birds, but you can think of people with the town behind them. And it's a struggle because it takes a long time to make the pot, and then I have a person who's ready to draw. Marty, do you have anything I can draw? <laughs> Sometimes I hide them. I say, no, I don't have anything. <laughs> but for this show, finally I gave in. I said, okay, do this one. Because I really need you to use that. But I love really what he came up with. But he said, what do you want me to draw? He often says, what? And we'd look at other pots. So I said, well, why do I take some ideas out of that? So he did the color, he did the draw. This one, he did the whole thing. This is called Monday Morning Art Class. And uh, if you analyze it, you can see his figures, my figures, and you can see the difference. Um, he also is looking often at some of the pots I've got that have the art shows on it. And I like these 
candies in blank and didn't put any design in them. And I said, Richard, when you're doing that, go ahead and put a design. He paints it and leaves them blank. So they just started their class. <laughs> they haven't started. Okay. Are there questions from any of you that I didn't? Right. It just seems, I can't even understand how, how do you put two pots together? And how do you have it be seamless? Like the one in the middle? Yeah, this one is two pots together. You can tell this is two together. This is two together. This is uh, another little top knot um, practice. When I first started doing it, it took me some practice to let that seam not show. But you basically have the two forms. You keep them at a stage where you can score and put them together. And uh, timing with ceramics is everything. Right, Amy? <coughs> so if I can't get around to it, I've got them covered. And a lot of times I'll have some big forms, and I'll have a bunch of little forms. And then I'll make a decision. And often I'll set this there and set to the side. Um, and then I score. And score is fraction play, put it together, put it, and then try to blend it so it doesn't show. And it's a very common thing in ceramics. You know the Greek pottery that we has all this going on? That wasn't made just in one go. That's several put together. Another real common thing in pottery is collaboration. It is common, common that one person makes the pot and somebody else does the drawing or the decoration. It's not as common that they're married and they have to get along in other ways and that they're also <laughs> And it's not common, I don't think, uh, for people to collaborate very much on painting. I don't think so, but it's real common in ceramic. So Marty. I went beyond your question. Marty, so you've done that on the outside. How's the inside done? You can't really scratch it. Well, I score the, those two parts that go together. I score them, and I connect them on the outside really good. Uh -huh. Now, that one, obviously, I couldn't get my hand down in there to connect the inside, right. but I get a tube, and I do the best oh, I can okay. on the inside. Uh -huh. Some of them I get my hand. And then you can tell the ones that aren't combined. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have another question. Uh, do you... Do you have a certain palette that you're like, I love this palette so much, and then that palette is actually, like when you got look back on your work, that there was a certain palette that was like the prevalent palette for a period, and then it changed, and then it was a little bit different, that you could actually look at now with the, with the one in the middle being where, where you are working right now? Um, right now, all the colors you see are the colors that are out in the studio as underglaze and glaze, just a technical thing. Some of these places on the pottery shine, and those are colored glazes painted on there. Just like you would paint your paint, but I use colored glaze. If it does not shine, it's uh, what's called an underglaze or a slip. Um, and this one, Richard chose to paint the whole thing with only slip. There's no glaze that's been uh, but, but anyway, as far as color schemes, that's what is so stressful. What's stressful is that I do change my color scheme so much. And right now in my studio, I have way too many colors and jars of colors and different glazes. It's natural to want to try something new. And Richard got on to me and said, we've got way too many, you know, because I get all stressed out that he's picking the wrong color. I've got too many colors there. With his acrylic paints, he can see what color they are. Yeah. But I do have some older pieces that I look back on and I think, well, why can't I do that uh, color? And I can. I pretty much, every pot that's in here is, was made in the past three months, Kat. I told you, I said, I'm, I'm under stress. <laughs> he told me a full year, you know, that the show would happen. But, like, here's a 
colorful long time ago, 10 year old, 1995. Tall, that's a real tall piece. I don't even know where those colors are. <laughs> I do, I just. But, and, and also, this is telling. This is real telling. These are some of the very, very first little attempts. They're just abstract, they're little bitty pots where I began to paint underglazes. And look at the color scheme. It's very muted mm -hmm. and monochromatic, simple. I got my nose. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you in here have my pot. And then I discovered the bright colors. I used to mix home slips and add home um, colors because that's how I was taught. I was taught not to buy any commercial. Oh, no, 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 don't use commercial. Well, painters buy tubes of paint. And so now it's very common that we buy a lot of commercial underglazes. And ceramic colors come in hundreds of colors. And some of them look like they're going to be, but most of them don't look exactly. Oh. These are a few from more than 10 years ago. I mean, a lot from you. Do you know, um, do you remember what prompted you to do the black and white? <laughs> Sylvia, thank you for asking that. Yes. I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Way back in high school, I did scratch board. I loved it. Yeah. Printmaking was my primary major in high in college. And um, so woodcuts and all these cuts, I always liked. And then I got a book of, I can't remember the artist's name, it's an African artist, of his woodblock prints. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to, you know, somewhere around there, I thought, let me do this scrapito. And, and nothing here, nothing here is something new that no, no one's ever done. It's just that these are what I've done. So there's a lot of people who do graffiti on clay. And it's a way that I love to draw because I think I mentioned in one of my notes that I sent out, I did everything but put up a billboard about that I would have a shot <laughs> But anyway, in one of the notes I said I like this way of drawing backwards. In the scrapito pots, I'm, I'm drawing and then I'm taking away the, would be the negative space, mm -hmm. and leaving the positive space. And that makes me draw different. You'll see for sure. Yeah. There's a lot more detail and there's a lot more going on in those than in the ones with the color. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what time it is, but I don't want to keep anybody from what you need to do. I wanted to ask about this, you know, when you, um, you said about four coats of black slip before you do the, start taking away the negative space. So then do you add the brown and the teal after it's all done? Is that just a, a, a glaze or what, what is it? No, uh, thank you, Jeff, for asking that. Um, a year or two ago, I started, instead of making it solid black, putting a little strip of a color so that starts at the beginning. And I do it right there. Right at the beginning. Instead of doing it all black, I do a little strip of a color. Uh, I can't see if those are... Like this has a little strip of brown. I just put a strip. And then when I carve my design, I don't pay any attention to where that is. I also had to test what underglazes were going to not just jump out and be take over. So in this show, I've used this blue-green and the brown, so it's done. And on the little tiles I brought for y'all to make some marks in, any of you that have time and want to, I, I forgot after I'd already painted them, I painted them solid black. <coughs> I wish I'd have done a few of them where I left the strip of some color. And like I said, back in the back, Kenneth is uh, allowed, I'm going to stay on today past because a few people said they couldn't come to the talk, or people do or don't come. I've brought some things to just work on and be here for a while. And if any of you do want to come back there, I've brought some tools. I've made it simple. I've got the little tiles prepared, hopefully. They are leather hard. The reason I don't let Richard touch them is because your black in that 
when you go to the car, it has to be just right. It has to be like a Hershey bar, a Hershey bar that's been in the freezer before you start carving. Because if you start carving, right, Jim? <laughs> I learned. <laughs> if you start carving when that underglaze isn't hardened, it'll just gum up and you'll have a mess. So I think I've prepared something to be like that. And, and um, oh, well, and absolutely, some of you got here early enough to look around and see the work, but um, be sure to see the work on the paintings, the titles are on them. And um, on the pottery, there's a sheet with the titles um, and also prices. If there's anybody that would like to purchase anything, that'd be good too. If you want to purchase something, you see Alex can. Any more questions? How many of you want to try to make some marks? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I went down all of the high the key points that I wanted to and tried to keep it short. Oh. And I'm not sweating because it's hot in here. It's because I'm working. <laughs> I work up. Thank you. 